Alrighty, we're going to look at how to dimension today on AutoCAD 101. Oh wait, I was supposed to have a funny intro. Oh well, too bad. Um, let's bring AutoCAD in. It's been a busy day. And this is the assignment. Um, we're also going to talk about something called mText. Um, up to this point, we've done just the text command. Let's open one of our assignments. Uh, we don't need the the properties dialog box. All right, um, we've done text where you pick, you give it a size. Here we'll tell it uh, um, a tenth of an inch. I think that's what it's set for, but we'll just put a tenth. That may be too small to see. Um, and then we type, type, and we can keep typing, and each time we return, yeah, just pretty tiny. And here we'll zoom in. And you notice each of these is a separate piece. Yeah, we can double click on it to edit. The command, of course, is text edit. Um, but there is another kind of uh, text. It's called multi-line text or m-text. Um, if we go up here. Um, there's also Arcaline text, a whole bunch of other things in the Express tools. We're not going to worry about that for right now. Um, but if we just go to text and click, you notice it has multi-line text and single line text. We've been using this single line text, but there is multi-line text. Um, the commands mText. The first thing mText does is it has you pick a corner to define where that text is going to fit. Um, we can then start typing. Um, this is where your text goes, and I can't type, but that's okay. Um, here, we'll click on it. Pretty easy to fix. Um, and once you're done, just click outside of this box somewhere. Um, and you'll notice it's one piece. We can adjust it. You see how it up, updates itself as far as the width goes. Um, if you double click on it, it starts the MT editor, where if we wanted to, we could change a whole bunch of things. We could change the height. We could give it other heights. We could change it to a different text style if we had some. Um, we haven't made any new ones in here. Um, you could do a whole bunch of stuff. You can make it underline, a whole bunch of things. Um, when you're using mText, let's go ahead and edit this one and see if it'll let me do it as an edit. If I hit enter and put a 1 here, it automatically starts a numbering system. So I can put text, 2, more text, etc. Um, this is kind of handy if you've got like a front page of a a uh, set of drawings where you've got a huge um, amount of text information. It's like the general notes for the job and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so when you do this a lot, the nice thing about this is, you know, we can grab it. Let's go, I'll, let's open one real quick. Uh, uh, let's see if I have a... Let's go to a job real quick I'm working on. There's 46. We've got a problem at one of our jobs, the one of our buildings, the parking lot's not draining. Um, I think it's on this page. Yeah, that's te that's multi-line text, so open. Eventually. Um, this is also in what's called a paper space. We'll talk about this later, but don't worry about it for now. But you'll notice, if I click on this, that's all M text. It brings it up, and then here's all my... Oh, look, we've got a typo. Let's fix it. Um, you notice it does... The nice thing about it, uh, it's all... It is doing um, um, some spell checking for you, a whole bunch of other things. So this is actually a very handy thing to do. Um, so, nice way of dealing with it. Um, if I was dealing with this and I decided to move it and we needed to adjust the width, not that hard to do. Um, so you can get it to fit. 
I will come back to the, oh, there we go. Sick. Um, you can do this with sheet indexes as well. Um, you can use mtext for anything you want. Um, I don't personally like it, but I'm a dinosaur. I started back before we had mtext, so everything I've always done has been text. So if I need, you know, uh, a line of text, you know, I'll just copy, 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 and then have my text there. Um, now, if I needed another line of my text, I can go copy. Um, one of your snaps, the object snaps, is called insert. So if I pick this insert point and come down to this one, they're now com you know spaced accordingly. If you're using mText, you won't need to do this because it spaces it automatically. Um, oh, I shouldn't have deleted that mText. Let me put some more in. Text, text, text. Oh, that's taking too long. Here, that's Klingon or something. I don't know. Um, if you've ever got this, if you've got multi-line text, and you really don't want it, the nice thing is the explode command, which we used to drop the status of rectangles into just lines, um, or to turn a block back into just objects. Explode works here, too. If we pick on this multi-line text, it's now just individual text, and we can edit it just like normal. If, on the other hand, you have a whole bunch of text like this, and you really wish it was multi-line text, well, you don't have to retype it. Go all the way over here to Express Tools, and under the text, you'll see Convert to mText. The actual command is text to mText, so if you ever can't refine it, you can try that. Just grab this stuff. Now you'll notice it's M text again. Yay! So that's how you can go back and forth between the two. Um, let's see. Um, so that's about M text. I don't have an assignment for the text or M text. We're going to do stuff with it later, but there you, there you go. Um, we're going to set up the dimension styles today. Once you have the dimension styles finished, Save your file as that ACAD template. Oops, right here, the drawing template file. Remember, we had saved it as ACAD.dwt. Um, so you might want to start working in a file, like go to New, start a new file. It'll have all your layers and stuff you've created. Once we create those dimension styles, save it back as this ACAD.dwt, and then you can save it as Assignment 10. Um, but let's, uh, in order to dimension something, we've got to create dimension styles to tell it how we're going to do that. Um, dimension styles start by going DDIM. In your drawing, there'll probably be one called standard. It's but ugly. Um, this is the default. Um, we're not going to use it, so just hit new. We'll call this my capital, yeah, dim zero one and continue. And then it brings up the dimension style editor. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tabs across the top. We'll start with this one. We're going to have to come back to it in a minute, but we'll start with this one. Um, if you go into the handout, um, it shows you what to input. But let me give you, while we're starting here, let me give you a little terminology for what this is. When it's talking about extend beyond dim lines and all this other stuff, okay, these are extension lines that extend down to the thing we're trying to dimension. This is the dimension line itself, just this part in between the two lines. That's an architectural tick. Right now you'll notice they're using arrows. I think the only people that use the arrows are engineers. Architects typically use the tick marks. Um, this little line here is called the extension beyond the tick mark. It's not at, uh, automatically here. You'll notice there's no line out here beyond the arrows. Matter of fact, we can't set it right now because the arrows are in place. If we had a real tick, it'd let us put a number here. We'll have to put a number there in a minute. Um, this gap here lets us know when we're reading drawings that this line isn't a part of the drawing object. 
that's why we have that gap. So let's go and look and set up stuff here. We're going to make everything by layer. The line type will be by layer. We'll do the line weight to 0 0.09. We want a really skinny line here. The baseline spacing is a quarter inch. You'll never use this. This is something engineers use. They kind of stack their dimensions one on top of the other, but we'll put a quarter inch here anyway. Um, and that's that dimension line, the line that's going right here. For the extension lines, we'll do the same thing. By layer, by layer, the line weight 0 0.09. Um, extend beyond the dimension lines, this little space right here. We'll make that 1 16th of an inch. The offset from the origin, this offset right here, this gap, we'll have that at 1 16th. Don't check that box. Don't check either of these. What these do is they'll turn one of these lines on or off. What this does is you automatically have this set distance period and you can't set it yourself. We don't want to do that. Now come to symbols and arrows. Oh, I should have brought this up so you could look at it. Okay, ooh, these are the settings. Now we're going to set the symbols and arrowheads. Well, we're actually not using an arrowhead. We're using an architectural tick. Click. And you notice there's a whole bunch of things here, weird dots and triangles and all sorts of cra crazy stuff. But we're using an architectural tick. Automatically, we'll set it to the second one as well. You could still make it something different. You'll notice on the screen, it's updated that here. Leave closed field for the leader. We'll talk about leaders later. Um, actually, that we're going to talk about leaders in another video. For the arrow size, put three thirty seconds. Center marks, um, put a sixteenth here. We're going to try to use it. We're trying to use a sixteenth everywhere we can, except it was too small for the arrow size. We had to make that three thirty seconds. Um, for the arc length, put none. We're going to do the arc length manually. Um, the rest of the stuff, don't worry about. Um, but yeah, this is where it, when I put here that um, we'll have to come back because now that we've set an architectural tick, now we can come back over here and we can set that value. We couldn't four because it was an arrow. Now there's we can put a line here, so we put one sixteenth and enter, and we're done. Yay! So we can go into the next tab, which is text. We want to use our Roman. A font um, well textile which we'll use the Roman s font if you don't have it done in your drawing don't come you know don't get out if you click this thing here you can go over to the textile temporarily and make it real quick um, the text colors by layer just the fill color none and for the height put one tenth I'll talk about this later because it um, to know how high text is and stuff when we get further into dimensioning but this makes it very easy to assign the text. If you know the drawing scale, the drawing scale is like, let's say, an eighth of an inch. There's 96 eighths of an inch in a foot, so it's 196 smaller than reality. Um, so if you divide 96 by 10, you get 9.6. There's your text height. But I'll talk about that more later. Um, we want the text above. See how it's above the line now? Um, the offset is 1 16th trying to keep 1 16th for everything and we want it aligned with the dimension we don't want this happening so we go click and so now you see how it's aligned with the dimension line and we hit ok whoops that was me silly we shouldn't shouldn't have hit ok we should have gone to the fit tab we were here sorry um fit tab doesn't hurt you notice it still created it you just have to mo keep modifying it. with the fit if we can, we want it to put um, both the text and arrows inside. Doesn't matter for us because we don't have arrows. What that would do is if we did have arrows, instead of having the arrow on the outside, it would always force it to be inside. Stick this anyway. Um, and we want it over the line without a leader. What a leader is, is that the dimension is too big to fit here. It'll stick this big line sticking out and put the number here. Um, that's why we forced the text to the inside. It'll still try to do it, and there's no getting rid of that leader. So we need to make sure that 
Uh, we don't ever create one by accident, so we keep that as our dimension style. Use your overall scale of one. We'll come back and talk about this in a minute, since it's really useful. And always force it to draw the line between the lines. It still won't. But it's talking about this line here, and sometimes when you're moving the text around, and you'll see how we'd move the text, it'll still make that line disappear. But go ahead and click the box anyway. For the primary units, we've already set the units in our drawing to arch, you know, architectural. We had a 64th of an inch, if you remember, and we discussed the fact that the contractor's never going to give us that. But that way we can tell if we mess something up. We're going to use those same settings here. So architectural, a 64th. For the fractions, put not stacked. That may be different. So I don't know if you watch it here. You see how now it's one space, one 64th. If it was stacked or horizontal, it does this. The problem with this is when you reduce drawings, this, and normally make half size sets of the big 30 by 42 drawings, E size drawings, that number gets so teeny that it's hard to read. So it's better to leave it at not stack. Now remember, what office you're in, they may have a whole different way of doing this. Don't go to them and say, well, Mr. Lane said it should be like this. No, whatever the office is doing, follow that. At some point, you may want to have a discuss discussion with them and say, you know, there may be a different way to do this. You know, there's this. Um, that's fine, but they still may tell you, no, sorry, we're not going to do it that way. And that's just, you just nod and smile, just nod and smile. All right. So back to this stuff, um, for our degrees, we want decimal degrees, we want 0, 0.000, no, we're never going to go to that level of accuracy, that's fine, um, but if we stretch something by accident, our dimensions are going to go bonkers real quick and show all these 64s, and that's why we do this, so we can tell, uh-oh, we messed something up here. Um, these suppression things, like if we, right here, it says, it, would, it doesn't say zero feet, one one sixty-fourth inches, um, so we want that, but if it said one foot, we really want it to say one foot dash zero inches, so we turn that suppression off. The same thing here, if it had 90.0000, that'd be stupid, so we'll put trailing, so it suppresses those following zeros. Alternate units and tolerances we don't use. Alternate units, if we click this, in parentheses next to the inches dimension, it put a metric dimension. That's what it's set up for right now. That's why you have the two point, the 25.4 multiplier. Um, on occasion, well, I've never had to use it in the 20 plus years I've, no, 30 plus years I've worked in industry. Um, you may, if you're doing a job that's a federal government job, they were requiring metric for a while, trying to force people to go over to metric. It never really worked. I think they've rescinded that. But just in case you're on a, in a firm that's doing like international work, this is where you'd click and it will display the metric for you. Tolerance has to do with machining. This AutoCAD's used for a whole bunch of stuff, not just architecture. Um, you can make 3D solid models where you can study a whole bunch of stuff about an object without actually physically making it. Um, like the finding the centroid and all this other stuff. Um, to do those, you need to know the you know the tolerances of the machining piece of equipment that's going to make your object. You know, plus or minus an accuracy of one hundred millionth or something. I don't know. And that's where you would set that. We're not going to leave it at none. At this point, you are done. So hit OK. Oh, I wonder why my phone just went off. Sorry about that. Um, You'll notice we now have DIM01 in here. If you messed anything up, don't worry, highlight it and go into modify, like I did a minute ago when I accidentally got out of the text command. Easy to fix. Um, once you got that, come over here, highlight it, hit set current, and close. And I meant to keep for, uh, going on these, sorry about that, but it says the same stuff I've been saying. Wee. Um. We're now going to draw a little 2 inch by 2 inch block somewhere with the rectangle command, and we're going to dimension it. So I'll just go um, rectangle. I'll probably easier. If, well, we'll just go rectangle. I was going to say I'd put it on a different layer. So two comma two. There's my little rectangle. Tangle blah. Dimension is under the annotate tab. Um, so it's like the multi line text is as well. 
This is to do linear dimensions. They're not always the same. One thing you'll notice with this picture, linear will give you the sideways and up and down dimension only. It doesn't give you diagonal dimensions. Um, we'll talk about that. That's another one called dim angular. Luckily, there's we can you know find these little icons and it's pretty easy. Like if we click down here, that's all the different ones you have. We have dim linear, dim aligned, dim angular, arc length, radius, diameter, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but we're going to use dim linear right now. Click on this corner, click on this corner. Yay! We've got a two inch dimension. Do the same thing over here. Not rocket science. But you notice we do dim linear and click here and here. Rather than getting this diagonal distance, we'll just, all we can get are the two sideways directions. If we wanted that, we would have to use dim aligned. And then it will basically align it with the direct, the line of, you know, a line passing through those two points. Excitingly exciting. Um, the problem is this works really well for this, but what if we're trying to dimension a floor plan? Our text, because our floor plans could, I mean, heck, just look at the size of the text compared to that sink. Um, so what we're going to have to do is come up with a way that scales these tick marks and numbers and stuff all the way up. Luckily, if you remember, oops, I didn't get it. Luckily, if you remember in the DDIM command, let's hit a new one and call this one dim02. What this one will be done is we'll come to fit. We'll leave everything else exactly the same, but we'll change the overall scale to 2 and hit OK. Um, and while we're at it, we'll make a couple more. Let's make, uh, let's make this dim 12. So new dim 12. We change that to 12. And OK. Let's set dim 12 as a current dimension style. Now if we come in here, let's go back to dim linear. You notice the text is pretty big. That's because instead of one tenth of an inch, it's now been scaled up 12 times. So it's, I guess, 12 tenths of an inch. We're going to need to make this dim one all the way through dim 720. That scale factor we're talking about is over here on the side on each of these. The name is dim 120, dim 240, whatever you want. So make all of these. Once you do, that's when you come in here, file, save as, click the down arrow, find that drawing template, and save it as acad.dwt. Now, you've every time you start a new drawing, you'll have all those drawing st uh, styles. I mean, dimensioning styles. Oh, here, I'll go ahead and do it. Um, now, the thing is, if you have a drawing that doesn't have your dimensioning styles, what's the fast way to bring them in? Well, I can't make a new drawing, but what I can do is insert another drawing as a block. Here, we'll just go... Let's go find one of my other drawings real quick. Um, oh, here's assignment seven. Um, this is before I started working in here. If we go DDIM, you notice there's no dimension styles. But if I insert, browse, oops, I'm still in this. Go to assignment 10. Um, here we'll bring in a Zern detail I have that's got um, dimension styles in it. Okay, I don't even have to place it, but now you'll notice if I go to DDIM, I've got a number of different dimension styles. Yay, joys and uh, yellings. So that's another way to bring dimension styles into your drawing, other than trying to make a new one every single time. Um, so pretty simple. Um, we're going to draw this funny little shaped object today on ADTOT layer. Um, so, I mean, in the drawing, or in a new drawing, whatever way you want to do it, um, uh, you can either, you know, do a save as and call it assignment 10. Here, I'll just go off at the corner here. Um, let me go to layer. 
I'm going to show you all later um, something called AutoCAD class, the way AutoCAD used to look. I hate having to click, 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 click. Let me, I'm just going to show you now. I'm just going to show you how to make it later. We're going to have a whole video on how to set up things um, so you're a little more productive. At least I think so. Um, but remember, I'm biased because I started way back when what I'm about to show you was how AutoCAD looked. Um, but I think it's a little handier than doing this. Like, if I want to draw something, I don't want to have to go click and then click and then click and click to get to it. I want it to be handy. I want it to be ready to go for me. Um, this is a previous version of AutoCAD. Here, let me click on this. Now, when AutoCAD came out, um, not this version, but, um, uh, you know, originally, we had, when it was first started becoming Windows-based back on AutoCAD 12, which was like in the 87, um, we had that Windows standard, the file, edit, view, and then in case we had other stuff. If you're familiar with older Windows, this was the standard for years. Why Windows changed that, I had no clue. Um, I find this a lot easier. In my case of the dimensions, they're right there. So I, I just have to come over. I don't have to click to get it to show these things. I just come over here and it shows up. Um, you also notice that this layer thing is always hot. I click here, it tells me what the layer is. So that's real handy. So I can come here and just immediately put it on a different layer. I don't have to click, 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 click to get to it. Well, anyway, we'll talk about that at some other point. Not right now. Um, but we're going to make the shape. So let me go um, set ADT. Whoops. ADTOT is my layer. Oh, I don't have it in this one. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. This, is, this was before we had uh, created that. So let me type layer. Uh, make a new one. ADT OT. It's magenta. Not exactly certain what the, layer, the width was, but probably around 40 or something, 50. And we'll click to make it current. All right, let's close that so we can see what we're trying to draw. So we'll start a polyline. Doesn't have to be polyline, but I like polylines. And we'll go, uh, doing the bottom one down here, we'll go 13 feet. And then we'll go, and you may find that you're like zoomed in real far, so you may have to go, oh no, and try to zoom out. You may get to a point where it won't let you zoom out any further. Just hit escape at that point. Zoom a little bit further, it'll let you, but it just won't let you during the actual uh, uh, thing. So anytime you got something like this, it's better to zoom out first beforehand. Remember, you can always use P-Edit to join your polylines back together when you're done. Um, but okay, we've gone 13 feet over. Now we need to go two feet up. You go back the three foot six. Now we need to go up this three feet. And over four foot six. So part of this is learning how to read these drawings. Seven foot six. Five feet. Um, two foot six. Hopefully I'm not doing this so quickly that I'm... Um, messing something up and over two feet and we should be able to go down two feet and click and we're done so enter so now we've got this big close polyline you all don't need to hatch this solid um i'm going to talk to you later about um right now if you go to the hatch it's kind of a pain in the tush look there's actually a hatch dialog box that I find a lot easier to use. Um, we're going to talk about that more later. Um, how to turn it to where it displays that instead of giving everything on the tool panels. That's another video though. All right, so you don't have to hatch this solid. Um, now we're going to put dimensions on it. We're going to use the DIM 96. Ooh, I hope I have DIM 96 in here. Oh good, I do. Ignore this one. That's I'll, we'll talk about how we dimension in paper space later. We'll set that current. Um, now I want to go to ADTDI, which is a dimensioning layer, and we go to annotation and dimension, dimension. 
when you do this, like I picked these two points, that's pretty simple. You'll notice that the two's not really where we want it. We'll talk about that in a minute. For the next one, you pick this corner, not this corner. If you pick this corner, that dim gap's not going to show up. Let me do it, and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. See how you can't, now, you can't see there's a space here? If you do this by accident, and you will, happens all the time, click on it. Remember these things have grips, and drag that grip back here. And then hit escape to get it to let go of the grips. Grips are handy for a number of things. Like, see how the three doesn't fit? It really fits. AutoCAD doesn't think it fits, but it really fits. Text has a whole bunch of different types of grips, and, it's, and the handout talks about this too. You've got the grips down here. You've got the grips here. These grips only let it move up and down. You notice I can't drag it sideways and change the dimensioning. And the dimension on the text lets you move the text. So if we wanted to, we could tell it, I mean, we could replace it here and so it would look fine. Um, in the case of two, well, that one really doesn't fit. So we're going to stick it off to the side. And we'll just draw an arc real quick. It goes from here to about that midpoint. You are rocket science, right? Um, so we go back to our dim linear. And we just keep working our way around it. Remember that right button acts as an enter. So you can just real quickly um, input your changes. Oops, I need the 15 foot one. I didn't do it. And we can put it here because we're going to move that 2 foot 6 up here and add an arc. But you get the idea. It's not that difficult. Um, it helps when you're really dimensioning to have a set dimension here so that if we have a stack of dimensions it looks kind of organized. Um, but for our assignment today, go ahead and draw the object and then add all these dimensions and use your grips to move the dimensions to where they look a little better. Like this one, AutoCAD stuck it way up here, but let's go ahead and move it down a little bit so it's a little closer. You know, this is all about making a drawing look cleaner. We want it to be as readable as possible. Um, and this talked about the different grips that are in it. That's all of today's assignment. Um, next time we're going to talk about um, some other aspects of uh, a number of different commands that we've probably already started. Um, but one in particular we haven't used, which is called a Q leader or an M leader, which is the thing that makes little arrows point to stuff and then we add notes.